Welcome to the Word of Life Center podcast. It's our desire that today's message would equip and empower you to see the Word of God bring life to your life. Well, we have a a series going called Better. And bottom line, we're talking about being better in the best way possible. And uh, you can better yourself in lots of ways. But the most powerful way you can better yourself is in prayer. And allowing, listen, and allowing God to instruct you about prayer, but then you stepping over into prayer and letting God do supernatural things for you. You you can get better. And you can get better at prayer to the point where you're going to be amazed at what you can accomplish through prayer. But you got to do it. You've got to be willing to do it and step over into it. And listen, we're in 21 days of fasting and prayer. The last week, we're going to pray every night. And I'm going to tell you something. We're going to see God do some things. We're going to see some supernatural things happen because we pray. But I want to share some things with you about prayer that I hope are going to help you understand prayer a little bit better. Because listen, praying is not just asking. Sometimes I think we think that's all prayer is. Well, we just ask. There is so much more to prayer beyond anything. I don't believe any human beings ever really tapped into the magnitude of it other than Jesus. Other than Jesus. But prayer makes you better because of the dynamic it produces in your life. Let me put it to you. Prayer does more than just get answers. In fact, that's really not a sideline. I mean, when you need answers, you need answers. But there is so much more integrated into prayer and the impact of prayer on your life if you'll just pray. You don't have to be a perfect prayer. You don't have to be the most wise prayer. You just need to be a prayer. So listen to me today. There are lots of things that transpire as a result of prayer, and none of them can always be identified as, I got an answer. Now, I know that may confuse you a little bit, but but if you'll understand the dynamic of prayer, you'll understand there's a whole lot more going on than what you could ever imagine when you make up your mind to pray. Everybody got it? There's, there are times when just that union with God will produce multiple experiences. If you don't understand that, that that's what prayer is all about. It's hooking up with connecting with God. And the amazing thing is this. Listen, I, I'm telling you from experience. The more you pray, it's like the more you want to pray. Because you, you, get, you get involved You get in a place where you see God working, and then you want to see God do more, and what do you do? So you pray more. That's why the enemy tries to keep us away from prayer, because the impact and the power of it. So I'm going to expand your mind today a little bit about the nature of prayer and its dynamic. Now let me read you a scripture in James chapter 5, verse 16. I'm going to read the latter part of it. Listen to what it says in the Amplified Bible. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. So prayer also makes power available. I love the way the Amplified Bible says it. It's dynamic in its working. Well, what do you mean dynamic? A a dynamo is something that runs continually, and it runs, and it energizes itself. That's dynamic. When you start praying, other things begin to unwind. Other things begin to work. Other things begin to happen. And all of a sudden, not only are you getting answers to prayer, but it's making power available for other things to take place. So... What I want to show you today is this dynamic at work so that, that you can see and understand 
how valuable it is to be a part of prayer, okay? Now, there are five things. Don't panic. It won't take that long. But there are five things that I want to show you today that I think are going to help you with this and are going to bless you, okay? The first one is this. This is the first dynamic that you've got to understand. When you're a prayer, there is a development of a strong relational tie. In other words, prayer produces relationship. Do do you realize when you're praying, you're talking to God? You're talking to the Father. You're talking to someone who you should have a relationship with. Someone that you can commune with, you can talk to and, 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 and hear back from. The word their relationship, I love this definition. It means the state of being mutually and reciprocally interested. In other words, prayer is you being interested in what God wants as much as it is him being interested in what you're asking. There's a mutual relationship there, a reciprocal relationship. That when you're talking to the Father and you're saying, Father, here's what I need in my life. Here's where I am. I'm asking for this or I'm asking for that. At the same time, God's going to speak to you and say, and here's what I'd like. There's a reciprocal working there with God that I just have to tell you right now, I can't do without. If all I did was get answers to prayer, I'd be, I'd be lost without that communion and that fellowship of the Father responding to me and speaking to me and guiding me and instructing me in my life. Obviously, Jesus operated in this in the highest level. How many of you know that? I mean, the highest level. Listen to what he said in John chapter 17. Now, this is a prayer, okay? John chapter 17, verse 4 and 5. Listen to this. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me. Now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. You see the relationship there? It wasn't, God, I need you to do this and this, and you know, I got to have this, and I need you to do. It was, Father, I've done this. You've instructed me to do this. I've done it, and now I'm asking you. There was a reciprocal, loving relationship. The Father wants that same relationship with you. He wants to respond to you, and he wants you to respond to him the very same way. Jesus prayed this in verse 9 and 10. I pray for them, talking about you. I do not pray for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours, and mine are yours, yours are mine, and I'm glorified in them. In other words, this thing works together. It's not just God working or me working. It's us working together. And when you're praying, that's what relationship is all about. That's what the Father wants, is that communion, that relationship, that bond together. Listen, think about it this way. When you make Jesus the Lord of your life, the Bible says you're born again. You come alive unto God. If you're alive unto God, why wouldn't you want to have communion with the creator of the earth, of the universe, and to have free Full, complete access to him. That's what relationship is. So beyond anything that you get answered, there is a divine relationship. A reciprocal flow between God and you. Now listen to this. James chapter 4 verse 8 says this. Listen to this. Draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Okay, now now listen to me. It's very important that you hear this. Very important. Because if you're not careful, you'll think, well, God, he's going to talk to me. He's going to come to me. He's going to speak to me. No, that's not what the Bible says. Thank you for your enthusiasm. 
It says you draw near to him, then he draws near to you. See, we religion wants to paint the picture of God loves you and God's there for you and he's going to speak to you and he's going to be with you and, and he'll tell you everything you need to know and he's right there. Listen, God is here, but if you want him near to you, you're going to have to draw near to him first. Plain as I can say it. Plain as the word of God can say it. That's the way it works. That's the way it is. And you have to understand that in order to have that bond, that, re, that reality of that mutual relationship with the Father. Let me show you, let me just explain it to you this way. Most of you probably heard the story of the prodigal son. You know, he was the one that took his inheritance, left town, spent all the money, partied hard, and then found himself in a hog trough, eating what the hogs ate. He said, you know, if I was a servant in my father's house, I'd do better than this. I'm going to go home to daddy. Now, here's the interesting thing. This father was a wealthy man. He could have hired a private detective to find out where his son was. You understand what I mean. You know, he could have found out where his son was and gone to him and begged him to come back. You know what? He didn't do it. But when that son did come back, you're talking about a party. They had a party. They rejoiced because the father said, I rejoice because my son who was lost. Now notice this. He has come home. Draw near to the father. The father will draw near to you. That's relationship. Now listen. Listen. The great thing about relationship is you can talk to God and sometimes it isn't proper. I've said, I've gone to the Lord. Oh my goodness. I I hate to tell on myself, but I've gone to the Lord. No telling how many times I said, oh God, I screwed up so bad. Oh my God. Oh father, help me. I have messed up. I have messed up royally. I did. Lord, you know, I've screwed up. I know, you know, but I got to get this off my chest. Now, nobody in here else has done that, I know, but I, but, but that's relationship. I'm not afraid he's going to say, well, Sam, you're the dumbest person I've ever met in my life. I, I don't think I want to have anything to do with you. No, well, he's my father. And he said, we'll work this out. We'll, we'll, I'll help you through this. We'll, we'll, we'll make this right. We'll get this right. Why? Because there's a relationship there. The greatest prayer I've ever prayed. You want to know what it is? You ready? You want to write this down? Okay, you ready? Help! Help! I need help! And I need it now! Oh my goodness, I've prayed that prayer. But see, when you have a relationship with your father... And you, you, you are confident and you have trust in him. He's going to smile and say, what you need, Sam? I'm going to help you. What you need? Tell me. Well, you know what I need, Lord. I know, but I need to hear it from you. That's relationship. The greatest thing you get out of prayer is that wonderful, joyous relationship with the Father. But now listen to this. There's something else that happens when you're a prayer. You have a a common bond with other prayers. I desperately need your prayers. I need you to pray. If I listen, if I ask you to pray, I'm not being cute. I'm serious. I need you to pray. If somebody asks me to pray, I take it seriously. Why? Because prayers have relationships with each other. And, and listen, that's, I, don't, I hate to say it this way, but that's not the whole body of Christ. 
Listen to this. Paul, Paul wrote over in, um, in 1 Corinthians, I mean 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11. Listen to what it says. You also helping together in prayers for us. Notice what he said. You are helping together with prayers for me. Paul coveted other people's prayers. There is a a relational bond between prayers. Now, let me tell you this. If you come to prayer our last week when we have our prayer time together every every night for that one hour, you're going to find a common bond that probably does not run through the whole body of Christ. But when you get a bunch of prayers together, something's going to happen. Why? Because number one, there's a relationship with the Father. And number two, there's a relationship between prayers. You'd be amazed at what can happen when a bunch of prayers get together. In fact, you're going to be amazed when we get together and pray. All right, so second, the second dynamic, okay? Now, this is very important that you understand this because if you're not careful, certain doctrines that are not scriptural really will creep into your prayer life, okay? Okay? The second dynamic is this. There will always be a response to prayer. Listen, silence is not golden with God. In other words, well, I ask and nothing happened, so God must mean no. Okay, listen to me. You ready? Listen to me. If God means no, listen, God will say to you, no. Do you understand that? Silence is not in God's repertoire toward you in regard to your prayer life. If you're talking to him, he's talking to you. So don't ever think, well, I, I, I hadn't heard anything. Well, go talk. Lord, I hadn't heard anything about this. What's going on? If, if you ask me something... And for weeks and weeks and weeks, I ignored you. What would you do? You'd say, hey, what's the deal? You didn't answer me. I've been texting you for a month. You didn't answer me. What's the deal? How much more would your heavenly father, you think he's just going to keep his mouth shut? I'm not answering them. They'll figure it out for themselves. And I'm saying no. That's just not the way the Lord works. He desires to respond to you. He wants to respond to you. Jesus cleared this up in the Word of God in Luke chapter 11. Listen to this. Luke chapter 11, verse 9, Luke chapter 11, verse 9 and 10. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, I say to you, ask, and it will be given. Seek. And you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. For everyone, how many? Everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be open. Now I don't know whether you know it or not but that's pretty clear. Now if, if you're not sure about asking about something, then that's a different story. But listen to me. The Bible is pretty clear. If you ask, you receive. If you knock, if you seek, you find. If you knock, it's open. Now, let me make another statement about this, okay? In regard to God responding. Listen to this. Everyone gets a proper response. Listen to verse 11 of Luke chapter 11. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Pretty straightforward. Sometimes religiously we think God's going to give us what we want, what we need, not what we want. 
Even though we ask for something, well, you don't need that, I'm going to give you this. That's not the way the Father works. Jesus was pretty clear about it. Even an earthly father is not going to give, if you ask for bread, going to give you a piece of, give you a stone. Well, I'm going to teach you a lesson. I'm going to give you stone instead of bread. You better learn something from this. Well, just tell me, and then I've learned it. Why do I have to try to figure it out? You don't. Lord, what's this rock here? What's this all about? Well, I just, the Lord wanted me to have this rock. No, if you have a relationship with your father, you, you, would, you would, if that did happen, say, what, what's the rock all about here? What, what? Number one, he wouldn't do that because Jesus said he wouldn't do it. But the point is, <coughs> excuse me, when you have a relationship with the father, you talk to him. Okay, you, you, he, he wants to respond to you. And, and listen, let me give you an example. Mark chapter one, verse 40, a leper comes to Jesus. He said, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Trying to put it over on Jesus. You know what Jesus said? I'm willing. I like one translation. It says, I can just hear the tone. In his voice. Jesus, if you want to. You can heal me. Kind of giving him an out, you know. Jesus looks at him and says, I want to. See, once you begin to understand how God responds and how he talks and how he wants to work in our lives, then your prayer life will will explode because you don't have to figure it out. He'll tell you. First John chapter Five, verse 14 and 15 has been really misused. Okay, listen to this. Now, this is a confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now, here's the crazy thing. People have taken that and twisted that into thinking, well, just ask whatever, and if it's his will, he'll hear you. And if he hears you, you know you have the petitions which you desired of him. But you never know because you don't know the will of God. Wait a minute. I'm going in knowing the will of God. I'm going to know the will of God about what I'm going to ask him ahead of time. Most of it I find right here in the word of God. I know it's his will to heal me. I know it's his will to provide for me. I know it's his will to give me wisdom. I could, li- I could go on and on. I don't have to fret about, oh, I'm going to ask God. I hope it's right because if it's right, I'm going to get it. I'm going to go in there knowing the will of God. If there's something that's questionable, something personal that's questionable and you're not sure whether this is right for you or not, here's what you do. Lord, I'm about to petition you For this, tell me now if there's a problem with this or an issue with this, because I'm going to ask you and I'm going to believe you for it. So tell me now if you don't want me to ask you this. That only comes out of relationship, folks. There have been many times, listen to me, there have been many times where there was something that I was going to ask for, I was going to pray about, just had a little check in my spirit about it. Lord, what about this? And I'm telling you, I know in a heartbeat whether I'm supposed to pray about that or not. The Lord will respond to you. He will respond to you. He will give you a proper response. You're his child. He's not playing games with you. Now, here's the part that you're not going to be happy about. Sometimes you're going to have to get quiet and get before the Lord and listen. But if you will listen, he will speak to you and there will always be a proper response. 
There are times, just want to throw this out. There are times when it's probably not the best thing for you when you ask God for something. He'll give it to you anyway. Oh, I said, Lord, why did you give me that? You asked me for it. I know, but you, you knew what was going to happen if I got that. And some of you are looking at me like, I, I've never heard anything like that in my life. Listen, he's your father. He's not playing games with you. I, I have to tell you, there have been a few times when I've gotten what I prayed for and I said, Lord, yeah. But I have learned that all I have to do is to make sure I hear first. Once I hear first, hey, there's no holding me back. Why? Listen, because there's a dynamic in prayer and that is that God will always give you the proper response. He's not playing games with you. He's not trying to manipulate you. He's your heavenly father. Third dynamic. This is an amazing thing to me. This will give you, actually show you the value of heartfelt prayer. Okay. The third dynamic is there's always a reward for righteous prayer. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse 5. Listen to this. When you pray, not if you pray, when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, listen to this, they have their reward. Even when you don't pray right, there's a reward. It's not good, but it's something. All right, but listen to what else Jesus said here. You ready? But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you shut your door, pray to your Father who is in secret in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will what? Reward you openly. Reward you openly. Openly. Listen, your prayer time is not only valuable to you, but it's valuable to God, to your Father. And He will reward you. We, we may spend time in, in, our, in our week of prayer here in a, few, in a couple of weeks, we may spend time praying about something that really is not personal to you. But because you're willing to take that time and pray about something that's not even personal to you, God will reward you for that. What's the reward? I don't know. I don't know the reward. I wouldn't know what to, to put, a, put a, a number on it or a price on it or a value on it. I don't know what the reward would be. All I know is Jesus said there would be one. Because that's how valuable your praying is. That's how valuable your prayers are, is the fact that, listen to me, he wants to reward you for that praying. Another scripture, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Listen to this. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is what? God. All right, you ready for the last part? And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Your faith in your prayer life is powerful. It is powerful. I, I tweeted this this morning. I don't know whether you... You, you do that or not or follow it. But I, I, I put this on uh, Twitter this morning. Listen to this. If you don't exercise your faith in praying, you will lose your faith in other areas of your life. If you don't exercise your faith by your praying, 
you're going to lose your faith in other areas of your life. Very rarely have I ever seen a prayer backslide. You know what it means to backslide? That's a, Jeremiah talks about that. It means you go backward. Why? Because you've got your faith on the line. You're focused on something. It's an amazing dynamic that God wants to reward your prayers. I, I, I mean, to me, I can't even hardly comprehend that, that that's how valuable it is for, for you that God wants to reward your prayers. Not by giving you an answer to your prayer necessarily, but because you are a prayer. Here's the fourth dynamic that, that comes from prayer. Now listen to this. I, I, I want to tell you, this is something that's overlooked a lot of times and people miss it. But it is a major part of prayer. And that is a major dynamic of prayer is revelation. There are times when I'm praying and the Lord will show me something totally outside of what I'm praying about. He'll reveal something to me totally, completely away from what I was praying. I could, I could stand here and tell you testimony after testimony of things that the Lord has shown me that protected me, protected my family, guided me, guided the church that came out of prayer, not because I was praying about it, but because I was praying and that revelation came while I was praying. In fact, I'm not sure that's not just about as valuable as getting an answer, as getting revelation. The Lord's showing you something in prayer. Let me show you this uh, in, in Acts chapter 10. This is an account of a man called Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, verse 1. He was an, a centurion, a military man, of the Italian regiment, it says. Now listen to this. He was a devout man. He feared God with all his household. He gave alms generously to people and prayed to God always. Now I want to tell you something. Listen, you are a born again child of God. If this man can get something from God, I guarantee you, you can. Because he, he was without covenant with God. He wasn't a Christian. He wasn't a Jew, but he feared God. He feared God. And here's what else he did. He prayed. You know, I don't mean it wrong. I'm not trying to judge this man, but I guarantee you, without having a covenant with God, he didn't know what to pray. He just, oh God, have mercy on me. Oh God, help my family. Oh God. He didn't know what to pray. But he prayed. And you know what happened? Listen to what verse 3 says. It's amazing. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And he said, Lord, what is it? Now, here's, here's the thing you've got to understand. He got a revelation. He said, you need to send men down to Joppa. There's a man down there named Peter. I know you don't know who he is. You don't know anything about him. Trust me. Go get Peter. He's going to tell you what you need to know. Revelation. Revelation. At the same time, Peter is in Joppa. It's Simon the Tanner's house. He's up on the roof. They have a patio up there. He was up on the roof, on the patio, praying. Guess what happened? He got a revelation. The Holy Spirit said, there are two men here. They've come for you. You go with them. Listen to me today. If you're a prayer, you can expect God to speak things to you, to guide you, to instruct you, to reveal things to you that you're not going to get any other way. Just not going to get any other way. Well, I've never had that experience. Well, listen to me. 
You can't make it happen, but it'll happen if you're a prayer. It, it's amazing how it will happen. The things, just an abundance of things that have been revealed just, just because you pray. Just because, not about that, but in prayer. I was praying one time when we first started this church because the city didn't want us to, we were done. They, they said, you can't build a building. No, I, I know you've got that property, but you can't build a building because there's no fire protection here. I'm praying. I'm just praying. I don't know what to ask the Lord for. I don't know what to do. And all of a sudden, by revelation, the Lord showed me exactly what to do to get the building built. Just boom, there it was. You can never discount the fact that when you're a prayer, that there are going to be times when revelation is going to come to you about something or understanding will come that you don't understand, you didn't understand something. Think about this. Listen to this. Revelations chapter 1, verse 10. John was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. You know what that means? It means he was praying in the Holy Spirit on the Lord's day. And from that came a volume, 22 chapters, and it's called the book of what? How did that come? Prayer. Because he was praying. Now, I'm not, you're not fixing to write the next book of Revelations, okay? <laughs> But the point is, there are things in your life that you're not going to ever know unless you're praying and God can bring revelation to you. Well, he can show me while I'm driving down the road. He can, but he won't. <laughs> Just telling you. Comes by revelation. Okay? The last dynamic. Listen to this. There will be results when you pray. Well, I've been praying. I hadn't seen any. It ain't over yet. Excuse my language, but it's not finished yet. There will be results when you pray. Over in Acts chapter 4, verse 31, listen to what it says. First words right out of the gate. When they prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They spoke the Word of God with boldness. <coughs> Why did that happen? Because they prayed. What did they pray? Lord, give us boldness. Don't pray it if you don't want it. When they prayed, the Holy Spirit filled the place. It was shaken, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Why? <clears throat> because they needed results when they prayed. Jesus cursed a fig tree over Mark chapter 11. Walking into Jerusalem, cursed the fig tree. When they came back the next day, they noticed the thing was withered from the roots and dead. They were all amazed. Jesus turned to them and said, you, you need to have faith in God. Whatever you say unto this mountain, whoever says unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and doesn't doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. So Jesus is quoting something that is a fact. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a fact. All right. So then Jesus said this in verse 24. Listen to what it says. Therefore, because I said that and it works, I say to you. Whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. 
He just set up a new dynamic for the body of Christ. Jesus said, I'm going to take this principle and I'm going to create a dynamic for the body of Christ. Listen to this. Whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them, uh, you're going to have them. That's what prayer does. There are results. But listen, here's the, here's the template that you have to lay over all of this. When you pray. Okay? You, if you don't pray, you don't see that dynamic. But if you do, then you start seeing it. So it's your focus, your place to be that prayer. Now listen, we've got, these, we've got these guides you can pick up at the information center. If you hadn't picked one of them up and say, well, I missed the first day. Jump in right where you are. If you go, listen, Jesus, it's amazing. Jesus talked about that. He said, there are laborers who I pay for a whole day's wages. And then there's some that worked one hour. They both got the same pay. Jump in right where you are. Make up your mind. You're going you're gonna to do it. You're going to be a prayer. Thanks for listening to the Word of Life Center podcast. You can connect with us on Facebook and Twitter or at our website, wordoflifecenter.org.